do a bunch of analysis on CS and see how the recoil patterns work and all that. And I can see that there's something there. There is something there that I like about being able to learn the different weapons. Oh my God. Your AK usage that you guys have been using is overpowered as fuck. What the f I don't think you're gonna be able to PvP anymore, bro. <laughs> Everything sounds so bad. I kind of like it, but it's not Rust. What Rust update do you think has had the most reverberating impact on the game and its player base? Your mind might race to DevBlog 179, where Rust progression morphed into a transactional scrap economy. Or perhaps your thoughts drift to DevBlog 189, when Rust transformed into a relentless grind. Hours upon hours spent farming for TC upkeep and destroying creativity for massive base designs. Then there was the world revamp update that promised to enhance performance, but instead blurred the unique style of Rust while the performance enhancements were abandoned. You've likely already guessed the most hated update, one that's been the subject of endless debates, one I've highlighted in nearly every video. The Combat Update, a pivotal change that streamlined gunplay, reducing the competitive edge for players, incinerating the combined millions of hours devoted to mastering Rust gunplay. This abrupt change demolished the skill gap that OG players had painstakingly built over five years. Both the developers and the community initially believed that players would eventually adapt to this new direction. Yet, two years down the line, this expectation has proven false. Players and now content creators alike are voicing their discontent more than we've ever seen before. How did Rust stray so far from its roots? Why does Face Punch despise the old recoil system? Does the future hold any hope for the revival of Rust's beloved old recoil? To understand the controversy of recoil and rust, we first need to comprehend what recoil really is, and why people have cared about it so much in the history of gaming. In the early 2000s, first-person shooters were straightforward, aim and shoot. If your aim was true, you'd hit your target, regardless of the distance. But in 2006, Counter-Strike revolutionized this simplicity by introducing recoil refers to the backward force felt when a gun is fired, affecting bullet accuracy and trajectory. Counter-Strike implemented this concept with the AK-47, requiring players to learn a specific spray to effectively use the weapon. This brings us to the concept of heat value in gaming. The longer a weapon fires, the higher its heat value becomes, leading to an increased deviation due to the horizontal and vertical recoil. This mechanic is governed by a programmed array, determining the bullet's impact points. Recoil isn't just about gun mechanics, it involves movement and accuracy, and weapon variants, but fundamentally, it's a skill to be mastered. Knowing how to control a weapon's recoil could give players a significant edge, turning it into a skill with rewards like bragging rights and more game wins. As gaming evolved, different recoil recoil systems emerged. Games like Overwatch and Fortnite introduced Random Spread, a simpler system that made pinpoint accuracy challenging. Battlefield and Call of Duty popularized camera movement recoil, where the camera shakes during shooting, simulating recoil. Meanwhile, Escape from Tarkov showcased physical recoil based on the gun's barrel orientation rather than a fixed crosshair. These innovations and recoil mechanics have been integral to the success of billion-dollar gaming franchises and the rise of esports. Skilled players who master these varied recoil systems are now celebrated and paid as professionals in competitive gaming. So in 2013, Rust debuted as a survival sandbox video game, drawing inspiration from DayZ and Gary's Mod. There's not much emphasis on its recoil mechanics, rather, gunplay revolved around aim cone. Aim cone for Rust could be considered similar to the random spread. It can be visualized as a hidden cone shape, where bullets are likely to hit. The closer you are within the cone, the more accurate your spray. The further away you are, the less precise your shots. The M4, with its high rate of fire and tap shot accuracy, stood out as the best weapon for Legacy rust, and was considered the standard for endgame combat. But due to the rarity of this weapon, many opted to use the P250 while scripting with AHK, auto hotkey, where they now held a massive advantage with no spread while shooting. As rust evolved, more guns were added, transitioning from its legacy client to the experimental version. And it was then, on January 16th, 
2015, in DevBlog43, that a new weapon emerged, destined to become an iconic symbol in the gaming world, where it would go to have the influence on the lives of tens of thousands of players. This game-changing firearm was none other than the Assault Rifle. Replacing the M4 from Legacy Rust, it became the primary endgame weapon. This Assault Rifle, with its unpredictable horizontal recoil and maximum aim cone, was less accurate, but emerged as one of the strongest and most sought-after weapons in 2015 Rust. By DevBlog72, on August 5th, the AK introduced its first pull-down spray, still heavily influenced by aim cone, but it was now leaning towards a learnable recoil pattern. Over the span of two years, Gary Newman stepped down as the lead developer for Rust, and Hulk took the helm. Known for valuing community feedback, initiated significant gunplay adjustments, focusing on the rate of fire and damage modifications, where any change to the assault rifle usually issued universal gunplay updates. By 2017, the community's demand for the reduced aim cone and a focus on recoil on the assault rifle grew intense. When June 8th hit, the AK's aim cone transitioned from a square to a circular formation, a subtle but positively received change. This led Hulk to further refine the AK's aim cone, leading to a decrease in aim cone and an increase in horizontal recoil aligning gunplay more closely with that of Battlefield. By August 17th, the recoil system neared its final form of the Learnable Recoil Expansion, or what many would refer today as Old Recoil. The Assault Rifle, M92, and P250, along with many other guns, began adopting a Learnable Recoil pattern with an 80% reduction in aim cone. Finally, on April 5th, 2018 introduced the final iteration of the old recoil system, where the assault rifle received additional recoil and a more pronounced burst pattern, along with an increase in aim cone for hip fire, forever changing the gunplay in Rust. You're probably wondering, why are these gunplay updates so important? Well, they reflect the game's evolution, showing an unpredictable pattern of updates from developers, and how they tried to appease the community's desire throughout the years. Initially, some updates lean towards simpler gunplay with varying degrees of random gameplay elements, usually focused around aim cone. This approach catered to the more casual Rust players, who wanted to stand a better chance against more experienced players. Conversely, the final wave of updates pushed for skill-based recoil with minimal aim cone, resonating with the original hardcore Rust players who saw competitive gameplay and were willing to invest their time into mastering the recoil. The truth is, there's no definitive right or wrong approach. It's all about personal preference and how players wish to experience the game. But what cannot be understated is the gunplay in Rust was unique to all other games, driving many competitive esports players to Rust. It was so special, in fact, that no other game has been able to replicate that wow factor Rust once had. But with Rust recently out of early access in February of 2018, many assume these changes were final. That didn't stop complaints, however, as with skill-based recoil, issues of scripting arose where players used devices such as the Bloody Mouse or third-party clients to have almost perfect accuracy. Still, support was pushed forward as skilled solo players or small groups could leverage their mastery of the assault rifle to win fights against clans or bigger teams with the same equipment. As Rust averaged concurrent player base grew, the influence of OG players began to decline, making them now a minority of opinion. Then came the unexpected, the combat update. But before we continue, ad time. Here's a problem for you. It's white day. You've been waiting the whole week to play, and now it's only minutes away. Fueled with excitement for all the time you will waste <coughs> use productively for your clan this weekend, but then you realize you didn't have lunch. Maybe you got some time to go to the store. No, says your clan leader, who has been abusing the group for several weeks. Uh, so maybe you should just go online and order some food. Spending an extra $15 for a $10 meal sounds like a great deal. Might be time to say goodbye to that new Rust DLC. But why should you stress when Factor has you covered? with fresh, never-frozen meals ready in two minutes, optimal for any rust addiction. With fair cost, high quality, and healthy food, now we can all spend our time doing the things that really matter. So what are you waiting for? Come enjoy a meal! Head to Factor75.com or click the link below and use code JACKSHEPHERD50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. Add over, back to the video. Hulk. Once a proponent of community feedback, took a bold stance with this update. He knew it was a controversial change, especially among veterans who had spent thousands of hours honing their skills. 
The update removed pattern-based recoil, increased aim cone, and introduced a gradient-based aim drift correlated with the weapon's heat value, where shots now had a 20% chance of hitting in the center. So why would Face Punch commit to such a drastic change five years later? Well, with the influx of new players, streamers, and the release of Console Edition, the goal was to make Rust more appealing to a broader audience. However, broadening the appeal often means sacrificing elements that had made the game special to begin with. The veteran community fought back, petitions, Reddit complaints, Twitter outcry, but to no availability, the change was not reverted. This was the first realization for many OG players that they no longer had influence on the development of Rust, but they still were not going to leave without a fight. And eventually, server developers discovered the recoil was still present in the beta branch of Rust, making it easily accessible to all players through Steam, where they could once again use old recoil from the May update of 2022. The legacy Rust server network, managed by Dicey, recognized an opportunity. They decided to switch back to the old recoil system, aiming to cater to the preference of veteran players. However, just as the nostalgia was about to be rekindled, a sudden update an hour before the scheduled server wipe disabled the feature, ruining any reason for players to play on that server. Speculation arose within the old recoil community, pointing fingers at Nico, the owner of Vital Rust servers. It was believed that Nico, also managing a main scene server, had learned about the community's intentions to use this feature and swiftly reported it to Face Punch leading to the permanent removal of the old recoil feature from the beta branch of Rust. Face Punch's refusal to bring back the old recoil system has raised questions. Their strategy seemed aimed at broadening the appeal of Rust in the gaming world, possibly at the cost of alienating its original fanbase. This shift might also be linked to the toxic and negative behavior observed in the community during earlier updates. Competitive gaming environments have a history of bringing out the worst in players, and Rust was no exception. Hulk, the lead developer, genuinely cared about the community's satisfaction and worked tirelessly in the summer of 2017 to meet their demands. However, the immense physical and mental stress of addressing player feedback led to his hospitalization possibly influencing a reluctance to engage in further controversial changes. Two years later, in November of 2023, Rust randomly began trending on Twitter, which was sparked by prominent creator Coconut Bee's criticism, which unleashed a flood of complaints from other content creators, clamoring for change. This trend persisted into January of 2024, where this dissatisfaction is still rampant among players. Search Play Rust on Twitter and you'll discover messages from Slef and Ahamid offering their insights on the game's current state, joined by a multitude of passionate community members. These criticisms included that cheating increased following the removal of the old recoil system. As the playing field leveled, some players turned to aimbots or ESP to maintain a competitive edge supporting the surge of blatant cheating since the summer of 2022, along with the Face Punch team's new focus on paid DLCs for some items that many believe should have been included in the base game. This includes over 10 DLC packs valued over at $120. Pair this with performance drops and a lack of quality of life updates in 2023, player backlash intensified, accumulating in a significant controversy when Red Dead Redemption 2, a game with no recent updates in several years, won Steam's Labor of Love award over Rust which has monthly updates since early access, leading many to believe the loss of this award is a subliminal message to Face Punch that their game needs some more love. To the defense of Face Punch, these updates have had no specific correlation or pattern to Rust's popularity. Fortunately, Face Punch has pledged to address these community issues in 2024, a critical year that will likely shape Rust's future. Two potential solutions exist. Firstly, Face Punch has expressed interest in continuing to experiment with the gunplay meta changes. Secondly, the framework for a solution may ironically already exist in Rust's discontinued hardcore mode. This mode was made in support of a more competitive Rust experience that previously excited many OG players, only to be neglected after its release. If this game mode is brought back, it could cater to real demands such as featuring old recoil or a new learnable recoil system, along with excluding pay-to-win skins to foster a more hardcore environment. Critics might argue this would segregate the community, 
However, considering Rust's diverse server types, such as AimTrain, modded, and roleplay servers, the community is already divided based off their interest. New players should also ask themselves, is it destined that the hardcore players of today will eventually be the left-behind players of tomorrow? Implementing a hardcore mode could satisfy veteran players, while offering newcomers a path to progress to a more challenging version of the game. One final avenue is the Carbon Mod development, which, if supported by Face Punch and the community, could elevate Rust to a Minecraft-like status, granting extensive control to modders, reinstating Rust as the sandbox game it originally was. Considering Face Punch's recent approach to updates, Proposing these changes may seem like a leap of faith. However, if you have an idea for crafting a more competitive Rust experience, I invite you to join my Discord. Let's see if we can make it happen. We're living in unpredictable times, and Rust's future could go either way. It's important to remember that you have the power to shape this future, and make Rust the game you want it to be. Hey you! Thanks for watching. Check this video out next if you like this video, and please make sure to subscribe for more content like this in the future. See you in the next one. Cheers.